Today I'm going to show you a fun, easy project that highlights just how powerful a lithium battery upgrade can be. My son got this 6 volt toddler quad a couple years ago at Christmas. At the time it was pretty fun, but as he got older and heavier, the weak lead acid battery inside couldn't provide enough power to the electric motor to go more than about a mile per hour. And forget about going up any kind of incline. So I decided to freshen it up and give it new life by rewiring it to use 18650 lithium battery cells. I sell these Millertech 18650 lithium cells on my web store and had some laying around the shop. I also had some 18650 battery holders that would be perfect for the project. Now before I show you what I did, please be warned that these are very powerful batteries that can hurt you if you don't know what you're doing. So don't just blindly copy what I did. I'm not going to be responsible for any damage or injuries that you may cause. The first thing I did was remove the lead acid battery inside the quad. The battery harness has a unique connector on it that I'll need to reuse, and I didn't want to hack up the wiring in case I wanted to reinstall the lead acid battery later. I removed the protective hot glue from the lead acid battery terminals with a flathead screwdriver and some muscle. Then I got out my soldering iron and prepared the 18650 battery holders to be wired in series. Each of the 18650 cells are 3.7 volts, so we need two of them wired in series to create a 7.4 volt battery bank. Now this is part of the upgrade as the voltage of the lithium cells will be a little bit higher than the lead acid battery. The voltage of the lithium cells also will not sag under a load as bad as the lead acid battery. Anyway, I soldered on some 16 gauge wire to the posts of the battery holders and then crimped on some connectors that will connect to the existing connectors that normally attach to the lead acid battery. I left this fuse or diode or whatever it was that was providing protection for the old battery intact. We don't need it, but if I want to reinstall the old battery someday, it'll still be there. Here you can see the completed wiring assembly for the 18650 cells. I installed them temporarily to check everything and make sure it's working properly. Here you can see that the resting voltage of the cells is over 8 volts as compared to about 6.4 volts for a lead acid battery. Next I mocked up the complete system to test it out and make sure it would work. I knew the quad would have more power but I was surprised at how much more torque it had. There's no traction whatsoever without a rider to weigh it down. With the systems check complete, the last piece of the puzzle was a safe place to mount the battery holders. I used a scrap piece of project board and cut it out to fit snugly inside the quad. Then I screwed the 18650 holders down to the board and installed it where it would be easy to remove the batteries for charging at a later time. Before reinstalling the plastic covers and seat, I made sure that the electric motor and batteries would not get too hot. I was also curious to see what kind of current was being consumed by the motor which gave me an estimate of around an hour and a half or so runtime under load. Everything was reinstalled and I brought the quad home from my workshop so my son could test it out. In conclusion, for about $25 in components and an hour of my time, I was able to make a tired old toy fun again. My son didn't even know that I changed anything, and he told his nurse later that day that it had a lot more power. In the end, we were still limited by the same electric motor, so there's a limit to the performance benefit. But I would say if you want to juice up an old electric quad or scooter for your kids this Christmas, just swap the batteries. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to buy some Millertech 18650 lithium cells, visit my web store at store.ldsreliance.com.